The trouble is that until this time, the aim of my inner world had been concentrated only on my one unconquerable desire to investigate from all sides and to understand the exact significance and purpose of the life of man. Until this time in my life, every activity in which I had rushed, every failure or success, had been connected with this sole aim of my inner world. Even my propensity during this period for always travelling and trying to place myself wherever in the process of the mutual existence of people there preceded sharp, energetic events such as civil war, revolutions, etc., had sprung also from this my sole aim. In the first place, during such events, I had collected material for clearing up the problems of my principal aim in a more concentrated form and therefore more productively. Secondly, as a result of the memory in my automatic mentation of the sight of all sorts of terrors flowing from the violent events which I had witnessed, and finally from accumulated impressions arising from conversations with various revolutionaries in the previous several years, first in Italy and then in Switzerland, and still more recently in Transcaucasia, there had crystallised in me, little by little, besides the previous unique aim, another also unconquerable aim. This other, newly arisen aim of my inner world was summed up in this, that I must discover, at all costs, some manner or means for destroying in people the predilection for suggestibility, which causes them to fall easily under the influence of mass hypnosis. 